Hey guys, so um, it's Wednesday for you, Sunday night for me. I'm recording this video a little early. Um, I just happen to be at school. I always get everything ready for the week. On um, Sunday nights, Sunday afternoons usually, it's just really late for me today. Um, it's almost 9 o'clock uh, and I'm getting everything ready for you for the week. You will have just finished watching your movie the last couple days. And your last day with me is Friday. So we have one activity left. Um, it's a simple one. It is just kind of a goofy one to finish it off. Nothing crazy difficult. And I am allowing you to pick your own partner for this. It's the last one. So you guys can pick your own partner. Uh, there is an odd number. So I would prefer there to just be like we've been doing one group of three. Everybody else is a pair. Um, and so I'm just going to walk you through this challenge. I said it's really simple. It's just, it's kind of like a puzzle. So you'll have um, really today after the video uh, to really kind of put it together. And then tomorrow you'll be answering most of the questions. And then on Friday we'll just kind of have um, a, some kind of a fun activity or day um, when I'm there on Friday. Okay, so... This is called the Pick and Pack STEM Challenge. Um, and you've got this pack. And um, it's you and three friends or family are going on a summer road trip. And you'll need to pack the car carefully, carefully using the following criteria and constraints. So criteria are the requirements, constraints are the limitations. And so go ahead and get out your packet. Um, if the sub haven't, hasn't passed it out yet, pause this real fast. Make sure all of the, you guys have picked your uh, partners and you are ready to... Um, ready to um, draw, I'm sorry, I'm draw a blank, um, ready to start this challenge. Okay, so anyways, let's go ahead and read this together. Uh, you must be prepared for four people to enjoy two long car rides and a weekend at the beach. All food and drink items must be along the top of the trunk for easy access and to prevent crushing. And you'll understand as, I, as you see what that means. At least three different prime numbers must be present in the trunk. So think of what prime numbers are. Prime numbers are any number that they are numbers that can only be multiplied by themselves and one. So like 13, you can only get 13 by multiplying one times 13, seven, one times seven, that kind of thing. Those are the requirements. Your constraints is you may only use the materials provided, so you can't like swap with other people like you've done before. Your build time is 40 minutes. So once we're done with this video and you've gone through everything, um, the sub will figure out how much time you have for this class period and then we'll give you the rest of it to equal 40 minutes tomorrow. So let's say you use 30 minutes today, you'll get 10 minutes tomorrow. Items may not overlap each other or cross the outer edge of the trunk. Items must be face up. And an odd numbered item may only be adjacent to one other odd numbered item. And you're like, what does that mean? You'll see. So those, that's the first page. You'll notice that the next four pages are shapes. They happen to be trunk shapes. Okay, makes sense, see that? Four different shapes. Okay, and you are going to choose, oh, sorry, um, you're going, those are the trunks that you're going to pack. Um, I'd like to see um, the more difficult trunk that you choose. Um, and I already have these numbers like in my head. Um, you get more points. So obviously this one is the easiest. So you might not get as many challenge points as let's say you choose like this one or the circle. Okay, does that make sense? Um, the next two sheets 
are your items that need to go into your trunk somehow. So you have to cut these out. And you're going to want to cut them out as close to the outlines as possible because these are the things that you have to fit into your trunk. Okay, and this is the top of your trunk. I know these are really weird shaped trunks, but it is what it is, right? So this is the top, this is the bottom. So remember in your um, criteria, it said all food and drink items must be along the top. So all of your food items, so like these apples, bananas, water bottles, have to be along the top because if you're actually packing a trunk, you don't put your food underneath your suitcases because then they get smushed, okay? That's what that means. So you have to put that all up at the top to prevent crushing. There are also numbers on these items. And three of these have to be prime numbers. Three have to be prime numbers. Your constraint is, let's say you put this brown bag lunch in there. It's a number three, which means that you can put a water bottle next to it. You can put two water bottles, but if you put an apple next to it, you can't put two apples next to it or an apple and a pear because every odd number can only be touching one other odd number all around it, top, bottom, sides to side, okay? You will get more points so what we're gonna do is you eventually will add up all of these points, okay? And you're gonna try them out on all of them because if you see over here, um, the, we'll get to that page in a minute, but you're gonna try them all out. Um, we're gonna add these up to see what you get, but I also have additional bonus points for the harder trunks, okay? Obviously the square is the easiest trunk. So it's only got the smallest amount of bonus, but I'm not telling you what your bonus points are yet. We'll figure that out, okay? You'll figure that out later. So you have to cut all these items out. So this one's upside down. So what do you need for four people for two long road trips and the beach? It's not very fun. So like you take these flip-flops, you can't just take one flip-flop, okay? Doesn't make sense. You also, if you need to, may make a second copy of this sheet here because you're taking four people and there's only two sets of flip-flops. You know what I mean? So unless you wanna go barefoot or you happen to just wear the shoes that you have on your feet for your imaginary trip, okay? Uh, you can, but you have to take this to the office and make a second copy, okay? So those are your items. So. Somebody needs, you guys need to be tag teaming it and getting those cut out. That's going to take a while. Okay. Then we're getting it to the worksheet that you're going to be filling out. So once, so you over here is the items packed and arrangement notes. So like what items did you pack? How did you arrange it? Which of the um, shapes did you choose? And then how many points did you actually get in your trunk? And then here's a sketch of it. And then here's your analysis and next steps, like what was successful about your design? If you were to create another pick and pack configuration, what would you change and why? What information might help you improve your design? So we're gonna answer those questions. And then last but not least, um, sorry, next page. Then you're gonna compare your designs to other groups, okay? Um, so, kind of look at your other groups around the room, looking at your own designs and those of your classmates, what patterns did you notice, uh, what worked well, um, and so on. So again, this top question says, which was your more most effective pack design? What do you think it was about the design that made it superior to the others? If you didn't make multiple designs, which was the most effective design from the entire class? Why do you think so? So again, since you guys are only, you guys are going to try the different configurations and figure out which one you can do the best. Um, 
you should be able to say, well, this is the one, this was the best. It's the one that you choose, end up going with, is going to be your best. If for whatever reason you don't try multiple ones and you just do one, then figure out who in your classroom actually had the best um, design, which means that they had the most points in the most challenging um, trunk. And they answer that. Um, and then for some reason, this page is like these weird bubble discussion questions. Um, I want you to answer these ones just on the back of that sheet. Okay, does that make sense? So what surprised you about this challenge? What, if any, frustrations did you have with this challenge? What do you think was the purpose of doing this STEM challenge? And what did you notice in designs that worked well and what did not work well? So everybody is going to have a copy of this. Uh, you're going to do this with a partner and so on. And that is your STEM, that's your last and final STEM challenge. It is a summer one. We use it to kind of kick off um, summer, but I have you guys third quarter, not fourth quarter. Um, but this is just called pick and pack. So it's just a good puzzle. It's making you kind of think about shapes and how to do things with um, restraints, limitations, and things like that. But you have to follow these directions. You have to meet the requirements and you have to follow the limitations or your constraints. Got it? And I will see you on Friday when we wrap up. Okay. Thanks, guys.